What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Independent Experience. I'm Indy XP, and this is the filling of the El Fuego de Oro pay dirt bags. This is for the Lego Ma Fuego or Lego El Fuego game. Got it written here. All right, so we're going to give it just a few minutes to see who's going to pop in with us. Hopefully, we can get a few people to join us. I know these aren't terribly exciting, but it is neat to see how pay dirt is made. And we are going to be making up five pounds of pay dirt tonight, guys. Five pounds. It's going to be seven and a half grams of gold that we're going to be putting in here. We got it right here. Ooh, ooh baby boy, that looks good. We've got five grams of the, of the little baby stuff, but then we also have... We got two and a half grams that are going in one bag. Johnny Kilo, welcome. Johnny Kilo is one of my favorite names in the, the YouTube stratosphere. And Justin Moody is here. Hey, hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome, welcome. Justin Moody, you are already going to be entered three times in, in the, the Lego El Fuego. So you are already got a leg up. You got in when gold was like at $1,600. And now that you know, come back down, you know, gold's back down of what down below 2000 now. So, but still you got a budget buy on that one. So we're going to go over, uh, everybody that's going to be in. We got four people watching. So, uh, currently, uh, we've got, uh, nine spots filled. We got 10 more to go. Uh, there's gonna be a total of 20 spots in the, uh, Lego El Fuego. Uh, there's gonna be 19 spots that we sell, uh, before we do the the panning, and then we've got uh, one spot that we're going to sell during the live stream. And if you guys watched the last live stream, that Joker bag was very popular. I think uh, Will uh, Hornbuckle bought that one. He's actually got a spot in the new one as well. So we are going to be putting together five pounds of pay dirt. We're going to be making four ounce bags. We got those bags ready to go right here. And we're going to be putting in five grams into the pay dirt. And then one of the bags will be getting the two and a half grams. That is definitely going to be a budget buy. We're not doing any silver on this one. Um, there won't be any silver in this one, but there will be silver in the next game. And uh, we'll announce that next game real soon. So make sure you stick around for that. The uh, nine spots that we've sold so far, uh, we've got three spots for Justin Moody. We've got two spots for Will Hornbuckle. Two spots for Dan Keller and two spots for Gibby's Treasures. All right. Uh, Johnny Kilo is getting a call. When they like Johnny Kilo, he's got some high power business deals going on. We'll uh, wait just a few more minutes and then we will get started. How's everybody doing tonight? Justin Moody, you doing good? Hopefully, you can hear me okay. Chippy, get down. Got my cat here. Haven't been home in several days, and she's kind of excited that dad's home. So, <laughs> Chippy, get down. All right. So, we got everything going here. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the pay dirt cam as well. Let's go ahead and bring that in. All right. Let's go ahead and blow that one up. There we go. All right. So we have way out the gold here for you guys. Now it's kind of hard to see. We got that there. That tray up there. Tear it out. Make sure we still got that. Yeah, we got the triple zeros there. And Okay, 4.95. That is lighter than it was last time. <laughs> I measured it out. Let's go ahead and do this here. And we'll bring a hard surface over here for this. Let me set up. That looks a lot better. Tear. I'm going to dump this out here. Get 
little pieces off there. Okay, tear. Right there. And tear. All right, we're back to triple zero. Pour this on. That is still weighing light. All right, well, there's one way to solve that. We're going to put a little bit more in there, huh? No. Oh, pull just bouncing out all over the place. Jimmy, get down. 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 Nine two. Nine nine. And five. There we go. All right. Gibby's Treasures is here. Welcome, Gibby's. We were just talking about you. Your ears must have been burning. All right, so we got five grams of gold there. Can okay, we get everything off of there? What is we did? All right, I'll put that back in the container here. That is a lot of gold right there. Whew. All right. So we got our three gram or five grams there. This one so we don't get those mixed up. And let's go ahead and get out the grand prize here. It's every 11. It sure as heck is, ain't it? Well, those are too big to come out. Come on now. There it goes. Ooh, that's a big nugget here. 2.54 grams. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 good sized pieces there. Check out this bad boy. Zoomed in on that there. That is a good looking nugget right there. Very good. All right, yeah, there's some good-looking nuggets there. So those are going in the grand prize bag of pay dirt. That's going to be the good one right there. That's the one everybody's going to be shooting for. At today's prices, that's going to be, well, let's see, two and a half grams. So a gram right now is about sixty, uh, $63, I think. So... Yeah, you got uh, about $150 right there worth of gold that uh, is going to be going to the winner. So very, very, very exciting. All right. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right. We got three people here. Gibby says he had uh, troubles with his headphones. Took me a bit, and these are new ones. Sound low. All right, so let's go ahead and get everything set up here. Turn this this way. And we'll get out the pay dirt here. Actually, I guess we better do the pay dirt first, huh? We better mix it up first. <laughs> That'd be step one. All right, so we have two buckets of dirt here. We're going to set up next to each other. All right. I'm actually going to switch. No, I'm going to leave them right like that. That'll work. And... Oh, oh boy, I almost ripped those right out of my head. <laughs> Silver Heist is here. All right. Hey, welcome, Silver Heist. Uh... 
The ASERP tomorrow will be pay dirt. You are right. Yes, Silver Heist. Yeah. Um, hopefully you guys caught my video earlier today on that. I, I made a video at work as soon as I saw that come across. Uh, I actually saw it on uh, Coin World's Facebook page first. So, all right. So, if you remember how we do this, transfer a little bit of dirt over. Just kind of coat the bottom. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that little piece of cat fur in there. Dang chippy. She was walking through here, so that makes sense. Get that bottom coated there. So, yeah, I am going to try for one. Um, you know, I don't know how it's going to work out for anybody tomorrow, but we'll see. So, uh, yeah, Silver High said, you're welcome. Yeah, I'm glad you got to see that. I'm going to just dump a little bit of gold down in here. Little bit of gold. A little piece more. There we go. A couple more. All right. Put the lid back on there. Let's go ahead and set that. We'll set it right there. And sprinkle another layer in. So this is five pounds i think it was five pounds two ounces is what i weighed out just so our measurements don't have to be super precise as we're filling the bags but we do try to get the same amount in each bag so okay well that's got a lot of static on it hey carrie carrie and terry kellogg's here hello hello let's see silver high says he's going to give the sh Give the Earp a shot solo. We'll put out big guns. Oh, yeah, for that V75. Silver Heist, uh, are you going to even try to get the gold one, or are you just going to go for the silver one? Be interested to see. I, I do have my eye on the gold one, but obviously that is – tomorrow might just be a, uh, <laughs> a trial run to see how that goes. You know, they only made 1,945 of them. So yeah, and they I think uh let's see uh the um uh mintage limit on the silver one was seventy five thousand, so it's gonna be quite a bit more attainable, but uh I'm actually kind of surprised they haven't released the date yet for that. Um maybe and somebody in the chat might be able to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they released the date for the um ASERP last year sometime in September for that November 14th launch. I can't remember if it was September or October. Might have been the beginning of October. It's like a cooking show almost. Right. Silver High says he might try for both, uh, but we will see if the V75s are all the same day. Buy gold on credit card and sell. Yeah, um, if I get if I get the gold one, it is immediately getting turned. I'm gonna send it off to to PCGS and uh, get that sucker graded, and then turn around and sell it. I have a feeling that that coin with that low of mintage and gold, that yeah, that's going to be something that's going to be worth I mean, on a collector's market. If you strike well, the the iron's hot. That is something that could probably go for, you know, forty thousand probably, maybe higher. Just judging off of, you know, the mintage and you know how it how the silver <laughs> the the enhanced reverse proof went last year. That was kind of a, I really hope they do them on separate days just so you don't have to pick and choose. Uh, but also, you know, the, the, 
we, we know the troubles that the uh, Mint website had keeping up last year when, uh, you know, the reported 350,000 people logged in. So, had a troublesome time keeping up for sure. Yeah, Silver Heist. I think that gold one, I think that gold one, uh, that's going to be such a hot coin with that low of mintage. That's going to be one of those prestige pieces. I mean, the, the enhanced reverse proof in silver was, that was a pretty cool coin last year. Um, but it was an attainable coin. I think a lot of people that were casual, casual collectors could even afford to get in on that. And so, um, with the super low mintage of the, the gold, uh, V 75 plus it, you know, I'm sure it'll have a selling price of, you know, if gold's at $2,000 an ounce, I would imagine that there'll be a selling price of maybe, uh, you know, 2,700, $2,800 maybe. So I, I, the mint obviously makes a pretty good chunk of change when they sell that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I would imagine that uh, the, the hype will be there, but it'll be a different type of hype because not everybody's going to be in it. They, not everybody can be a flipper at that price. So, I'm going to put the last of this in there. So, guys, while I'm mixing this up, we do have spots left. We do have bags left for the Lego My Fuego. Um, we've got 10 spots left. We've sold nine so far. One of those will be given away. Uh, in the live stream, you know, got all five grams dumped in there. And I have a lid somewhere. There we go. So we do have spots left. If anybody is interested, those are $35 a bag. And we will have an, a panning party once all of those are sold. Okay, here we go. They are ready for the bag. All right, so get that set up there. Uh, let's see, Gibby says, should I get out a spoiler for this? <laughs> Lego my fuego. Uh, All right, so we'll get everything set up here just right. We've got 20 bags ready to go. We got the spoon, we got the box to put them in. And I'm gonna take a nice little quick swig. There we go. Gotta wet the whistle a little bit. So these are gonna be four ounce bags. Okay, let's get into it. Now, if we remember last time, now I'm going to do my folder. There we go. The, this scale does not stay on, but... Tear, hood, and a spoon. A little bit more. Four ounces. All right. 
pour that into the folder. And pour that. that fold it up and dump it into the bag. All right, bag number one, ready to go. All right, that's what we got here. Have fun stream. Good luck with U.S. Mint on Wednesday. Yes, Silver Heist. Thank you. You have a good evening and good luck to you as well, sir. And we have Dove Season 91s here. Woo. <laughs> he is a high roller if we ever had one here at the El Fuego. How much have you won so far, Dove Season 91? You might know off the top of your head. I know he's got quite a bit of silver that we're we're holding on to to uh, make him a custom pour once we get the smelter up and running. I do have everything worked out with the owner of the company that I work for, and we're going to be using some warehouse space there. So we got a nice clear area. Four. All right. Here we go. Dump that there. I did see a piece of gold in that one. Look like a nice little piece there. Bag number two, Dove Season 91 says he's won a bunch of dimes. I think he's won more than just a bunch of dimes, I think. I've got records, man. I can go back and look it up. <laughs> we'll get these bags sealed once we have them all filled. Uh, I did. Oh, Red Step Sack said he did not get to notice. Yeah, I thought, uh, I apologize, Red. I was going to give you a heads up on that earlier to see if you wanted to come on. All right, we're just hanging out tonight, I think. Having a good old time. Red said you got the notice from Terry and Terry Kellogg. Thank you, Terry, for getting that over to Red. Six, seven, eight. Nine, four. Uh oh, that one went a little over. Oh, a little heavy. It's all right, though. Uh, let me and Terry know when he wins the 1916 dime. What dime is that? I'm not sure what dime you got there. Bag number three. All right. Bella's dad, a.k.a. Phil, can't stay. Just wanted, to qu just wanted to drop a quick like. Well, I appreciate you stopping in for sure, Bella's dad, a.k.a. Phil. Appreciate that. We're just having a casual little Tuesday night. Getting the bags for the El Fuego. De Oro. Ready? This will be the Lego El Fuego. Uh, what's the PayPal account again? Oh, yes. Uh, it is. Uh, let me just go ahead and put it in here for you guys. It's IndieGuy711 at gmail.com. And put that in the chat. 
And we'll just go ahead and pop that right up there on the screen. That's not the right one. <laughs> Elusive dime that cost $1,000, he says. All right. I'm not familiar with that dime, but it sounds like it's going to be, pardon the pun, a pretty penny. <laughs> oh, dad jokes. Yeah, turn this one back on. If anybody knows of a good scale, one that stays on in particular, I've had this scale for a long time. Uh oh, it's got a piece of gold right there on top. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. I'm gonna pour it this way. You can see it. It's right there. It's a big one. Ooh, there's another one. This is a heavy one. There's a little bit more. A little bit more. There you go, and there's the four. All right, give me a second. I'll come up. Dan Keller. Dan Keller, is he knows all about winning at the El Fuego. I even heard that nugget hit inside the folder on that one. Dan Keller came to already. He's probably already here to collect his prize. see Gibby says he's been looking for a good scale himself yeah like I said I got this one at Menards oh gosh a long time ago it's actually when I worked there and uh, I did a lot of um, I sold a lot of drill bits and tools and stuff to actually i sold them on ebay but my biggest customers were actually smaller hardware stores family-owned hardware stores in rural parts of the country would buy my parts off of ebay because they were still in blister packs and stuff and uh, so i would use this scale for postage when i was mailing that stuff out And it's worked out for a while, but the fact it doesn't stay on when I need to st <laughs> to stay on, that's... Okay, here we go, dump it in the folder. And dump it in the bag. Like I said, we'll seal all these up at the end. Once we get the final bag done. So how's everybody doing with uh, COVID in your areas? Has uh, anybody uh, live in an area that uh, they're shutting things back down like, like they're doing here where I live? Uh, Indianapolis is getting shut back down again. They closed the bars. They closed, uh, uh, there's closing schools. Uh, theaters are still closed, of course. Um, um, let's see. Fred says, sorry, dude. I thought that was a link in your email. No worries. Uh, I do have good scales though through Dymo. Yeah. This one is Royal, which isn't bad, I guess. Just gotta turn it back on after each one here. But yeah, so my, my kid's school system, uh, they were actually the, ooh, I saw a big nugget there. Uh, they were actually the very first school system in the state to shut down uh, back at the very beginning of all this. And uh, being that they were the first one to close, they became the first one to reopen. And they uh, they've been back in school now for... 
Oh, let's see, a week and a half, almost two weeks, and they've gone ahead and closed the high school again. Uh, high school will be open for e-learning only for the next month. I think they said that it's going to be closed until August 31st, and then they'll reevaluate at that point. Uh, both of my kids, I've got one in middle school and one in elementary school, so they're still going to school. Our school systems allowed us the option for um, – whether or not we wanted our kids to do e-learning or if they wanted to go to school. Um, both of my kids, we gave, we left it up to my daughter, the one in middle school. We left it up to her on whether or not she wanted to go back. And she desperately wanted to go back to school and see her friends. Of course, that's just like any other eighth grader. Um, my son, we didn't give it. We didn't give him an option. Um, he was accepted into the accelerated programs at his school this year. And so we, Felt that it was important for him to go, uh, go to school. Make sure he got, got that. He frank, quite frankly had been bored in school for the first several years. <laughs> so hopefully the accelerated classes are going to be good for him. So we wanted to make sure that he got to experience that. And four. 4.1. That's all right. Oh, uh, let's see. What am I saying here? Um, Carrie and Terry Kellogg, this is going to suck for me and the kids not going back to school. Yeah, I've the only the only work that I missed throughout this whole thing. Um, obviously, my work did not shut down since in the state of Indiana remodeling is considered a, an essential industry. Uh, so the only time I missed was actually when I had COVID-19 back in, in March, uh, my patient 24 status. And I think we're up to somewhere around, I don't know how many cases we had 35,000 cases in Indiana. Maybe, I don't know. But I'm glad I got it out of the way early. <laughs> Uh, Dove Season says that the bars, health clubs, and theaters are still closed in Arizona. Mm. He says that his son at Arizona State uh, has all classes online except for labs. Very cool. Uh, Dan Keller, the bags have not sold out yet. Um, just to recap, uh, we've got 20 bags available. Um, they are $35 a bag. Um, 19 of the bags will sell before the stream. The last one will sell during the stream as the Joker bag. I think that Dutch auction uh, worked out really well on the last one. I think guys really liked that. Um, we put five grams of gold in the pay dirt, and then we've got uh, two and a half grams that uh, are going to be going in the big bag. So, um, we have sold nine spots out of the 19 available, three to Justin Moody, two to Will Hornbuckle, two to Gibby's Treasures, and two to Dan Keller. So, Let's see. Gibby's Treasures says, uh, my two high schoolers will go uh, three or four days a week. The other younger ones, uh, they're going to be doing remotely. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Dove season 91. That was back in March, middle of March. Or so yeah, it's almost six or five months ago now. So hard to believe it was that long ago. Oh, I see a nuggy. Right there on top. Drop them down in there. Ooh, got a little low results with that poor, didn't I? Well, I gotta watch those. That last bag might be a little light. But that last bag's the one that gets the gold, gets the grand prize. So I don't think that guy's gonna be all too upset if uh, his bag's announced short.
So bad news at my my household. Obviously, the uh, Indianapolis 500 announced last week that uh, they've gone to zero occupancy. There will be no spectators at this year's Indy 500, which is always a very huge deal at my house. And uh, this would be my 29th Indy 500 this year. So, yeah, it's a little... A little sad around here, but uh, there's actually one spot where you can stand outside of the track uh, because the track is actually in a, it's in an urban area. Uh, you would think that a track that size would be out in the middle of nowhere. No, Indianapolis has grown around that track over the years and there's neighborhoods along two sides of the track. And there's actually a spot in the grandstands. There's a creek that runs underneath the, the track and further and uh there's a spot where it comes out from underneath the track where there's no grandstands as it comes out onto 16th street and so uh there's a big parking lot there and i went there for the brickyard 400 uh last month and there was probably 50 cars parked there we just kind of stood outside the track watched cars go by and uh, there's a Jumbotron there. They have it turned on, so you can actually stand out there and watch race coverage from right outside the track, and you'll be there. So that's what me and the lady friend are going to be doing on race Sunday. One of the things we're going to be doing that day, anyway. We've got uh, the uh, world's largest food truck Expo is coming to town. First time it's ever been here in the state of Indiana and just happens to correspond with that race day. So we're going to go to that and uh, go get some food truck food and then we're going to head out to the track. So hopefully uh, there hasn't been any, or well, I can't say any. I think pretty much everywhere's seen some kind of civil unrest, but I hope there hasn't been too much in your guys' areas. We've had a little bit here, but uh, not too bad. We had a we had a Black Lives Matter march up uh, from downtown to the governor's mansion, which was a little scary because I live I don't live in the exact same neighborhood as the governor, but it is only about a mile from my house, so hit a little close to home. It's right before the 4th of July and uh, some Jag wagon was lighting off fireworks. So not sure whether that's gunfire fireworks in my neighborhood. So I heard that a lot of sports are held off for the rest of the year. Yes. Gibby. Yeah. Uh, we, they announced today the big 10, is actually canceling its football season this year, which isn't too big for us here in Indiana because our Big Ten teams are not very good. <laughs> so uh, we've got IU and Purdue. And uh, 20 years ago, Purdue had a really good football team, Rose Bowl champions. we got a friend of mine that was uh, – second string field goal kicker for them the year they won. They won the Rose Bowl, so he's got a real nice Rose Bowl ring. And I don't know if he got the kick in that game or not, but still cool ring to see and hold in person for sure. And, uh, of course, we didn't have um, – one of the big things here in Indiana, of course, is marching bands, and they've already announced that marching band season is canceled. Uh, and they always have the Grand National Championships for marching band here, and uh, that's been canceled. So, so yeah, it's unfortunate for those kids. I was in marching band, uh, the area of where I grew up is really, really huge with marching band. And uh, 
won several national titles after I was there, of course. I was really just there to have a good time, meet some women. I played clarinet, which sounds sounds kind of fruity, but you know what? There's a lot of women that play clarinet and not very many guys. So worked out real good in my favor, I'd say. I guess I can put these a little bit closer to you guys, huh? So Indiana, of course, is a basketball state. And, of course, I am a diehard Butler basketball fan living right down the street from Hinkle Fieldhouse. Historic Hinkle Fieldhouse. If you're going to call it Hinkle, you got to call it just like they do on – TV. It's historic Hinkle Fieldhouse whenever they talk about it. It's a very, very cool basketball arena. If you ever get a chance to go there, it's a very cool field house. It's the, I think it's the second or third oldest continuously used um, college basketball arena in the country. So definitely been there a long time. Okay. And, uh, we're getting real close to being able to scoop the perfect amount each time, aren't we? All right. I want to move this back a little bit. It's making me a little nervous. I'm going to <laughs> dump <laughs> pay dirt all over that thing. Let's see what we've got going on in the chat here. Uh, let's see. David Carlisle, welcome, sir. He says, War Eagle. Uh, let's see. Are you in Alabama? War Eagle. David Carlisle, are you talking about the um, the V-75 Eagle coming out later this year? Is that what you're referencing, or is that your high school mascot? Let's see. That was bad. What, 12? How many bags we got left here? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that was bag 12. Says he is in Alabama. Thanks for coming in, David. Haven't seen, I haven't got to talk to any of you guys here in a lot of times. Uh, let's see, Auburn. No, oh, Auburn. Oh. Auburn football. Gotcha. Yeah. Got it. See, clearly, I don't know. Not a football guy. Alabama doesn't even have a basketball team. I'm not sure if they do or not anyway. All right. If they do, I can't imagine they're, they get much love. Other than the, uh, the football team. It says, look at my hat. Even if I could see the hat, I tell you, I don't know if I'd recognize what it is. So, <laughs> uh, 
Let's see. Gibbs Treasure says uh, his girls are upset that they can't be involved in orchestra and band this year. One played viola and the other played violin. Yep. My and neither one of my kids are musically inclined so much. <laughs> my daughter does sing in choir, uh, but uh, only because they they make you either take band or choir. I think that's why she chose choir. So even though um, her mom was was a clarinet player as well. Um, but uh, I, pl I played the entire family. So uh, everything from alto clarinet all the way up to the uh, contrabass clarinet, which is the great big Barry Sachs looking clarinet. Weighs about 75 pounds. Strap that around your neck. Ooh, I saw a big piece of gold in there. There we go. Four. Dove season says, spent a few years on the Gulf Coast many years ago. I'm spending more and more time on the Myrtle Beach coast. You guys know I was down there last month, and I'm going down again in October. So, got good friends that live down there, uh, north of North Myrtle Beach, kind of inland. Uh, they had moved down there last year, and uh, when the last big hurricane came through last year, the... Uh, southernmost tornado uh, that was associated with that hurricane actually was in their front yard. Uh, it started in their front yard. So uh, they moved a little bit inland this year and uh, they fared pretty well. They did all right. I don't think they had much damage in brand new house they had built. So Uh, let's see, you got a bootleg item and eBay says I need to go to the post office to return it to get my refund. I said maybe if it's a shirt that's the wrong size, but this is a bootleg. Hopefully you didn't get burned too bad on that, Red. I've got, I'm getting a little worried about an online order I placed uh, a couple of weeks ago. Haven't got, I've got a confirmation that I purchased, but haven't gotten any confirmations of it shipping or when it will ship or any kind of update like that. So tomorrow it's been two and a half weeks, almost it'll be three weeks on Friday that I purchased. And uh, so we'll see. 40 bucks and a lot of time. Yeah, that's a bummer. That is a bummer. Let's see. Yeah, I know that's going to turn off as soon as I start pouring. I saw some gold. Some more gold. Uh, 
Brent says, my mail order bride hasn't been here in two years. She's probably 23 by now. That's why you got to pay extra for the insurance, man. It's always worth paying for the insurance and the air holes. They don't tell you that when you buy a Russian bride, that you got to buy air holes for the crate. Otherwise, it's a long ride over from Belarus. She might not make it. Unless she's really good at holding her breath. If that's the case, then you're a lucky man. hey -o. Or you can just be a magician. She could be like your assistant or something. Do you need to get insurance in case she tries to bring her family right behind? Uh, then you're sitting in the house full of people speaking Filipino and you're the only one who speaks English. Mm. That's a good question. Sounds like, like my brother. His, uh, my brother's wife is from Mexico. And she's lived here for 40 years or almost 40 years. Um, and she moved here with her mom when she was very, very, very young and um, just a few years old. And uh, uh, but her grandmother had moved as well sometime back, and they speak Spanish in their house at holidays when grandma's over because grandma does not speak English. So everybody speaks Spanish except my brother and his father in law. And he, his father-in-law doesn't speak Spanish either, so, or at least not well. Um, my brother who can speak six languages, seven languages. Spanish isn't one of them, so <laughs> that's on him, I guess. The most handsome guy at my job got a mail-order bride, not being gay, just saying... Now he lives in a house full of Filipino-speaking people that don't speak English. <laughs> uh, I've, I have a few acquaintances that I believe have mail-order brides, but uh, we don't know. It's one of those things that's uh, improper to ask, we'll say. Actually, where I grew up, um, the gal that was the... Uh, at one point in time was the head of the town council was a, who was a mail order bride herself. She came here to America and she was a mail order bride from back in the seventies, I believe. And uh, she probably was a very attractive woman at one point in time. All right. We got three bags left. Uh, you know who he's, he knows who he's hanging out with on Thanksgiving. <laughs> because being Filipino, um, they're probably not celebrating Thanksgiving unless it's just something they want to do. But, uh, I think the last bag might be a little heavier. Cut that one off just a wee bit more. Heard a couple, couple pieces hit the folder on that one. Woohoo! So Red, I hope uh, hope everything's working out between you and the doctor as well, man. Been thinking about you, hoping everything's working out for you. Ooh, that one didn't seal. There we go. All right, I'm getting down here to the end.
Let's turn that back on right quick, huh? Four. Let's put a little bit more love on there. There we go. All right. Perfect. All right. Because Red, didn't you say you weren't you married to was it a Cuban lady or lady from the Dominican Republic or something? Maybe it was just you dated one. Maybe that was it. I think we had talked about that once or twice before. I like my women like I like my cheese. American singles only. That's not true. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, this one, let's see how close we got. This is the last one, guys. This bag is going to be mucho heavy. Oh, good God. All right, so this one's going to be six ounces. Indeed. Did you watch the lowdown on the shooting at the White House last night? Can you fill me in? Um, yeah, I uh, I heard about it. I know that the president was in the middle of a press conference when it happened, and the Secret Service came and took him away. And uh, but uh, I don't know any of the particulars about the shooting or anything. Okay, so we got this beefy boy here. I'm going to draw a bag at random to uh, put the extras in here. There we go. All right. We got that one filled up. All right. So, done with this. Then I'll kind of cleaned off there. All right. Perfect. Drop that down, move this out of the way, and we'll bring this bag back over. Uh, let's see. No Irish stripper. He says, I was married to an Irish stripper. Uh, but all of my girlfriends since I got divorced have been island girls, bag ladies, super dark black ladies. Mm. Nice. Nice, very nice. All right. So we're going to take this and just kind of scoop these around a little bit, give a little shuffle. Okay, and then I want to pull out one bag. That's the bag right there. And. Yeah, she got married to a doctor this weekend. Uh, she turned. She returned all my trailer park boy videos the day before. Oh, man. So sad. Well, at least you got your trailer park boy videos back, man. Those are amazing. If you guys have not watched trailer park boys, definitely make sure you check those guys out. All right. So we got. The grand prize, two and a half grams. 
of gold. You know, this has a street value right now of about 140 bucks right there. So you are getting a budget buy by getting in on the El Fuego. It's only $35, guys. You PayPal me, friends and family, at IndieGuy711 at gmail.com. And once we sell the remaining 10 spots, the remaining 10 bags, then we're going to have a painting party, and we're going to open them all up and weigh out and see what everybody got. And you could be the lucky person that gets those big old nuggies. And they are going in. Give that a little shake. Cover that all up in there. All right. Nuggie nuggies. So it is not the big bag. So we that was not the six ounce bag. But there we go. All right. We got them filled. I got the sealer here. We can go ahead and seal them up. While you're all here as well, let me make a little bit of room here on the old table. Shoot, there we go. So I've gotten to the point now where I have just random, I have random gold just lying all over the place. I had a bag of pay dirt that I had made my kids that they didn't open yet. I've got, I don't know, another seven, seven grams of gold there. I had well, really I found a little thing of paid or a little thing of gold that my kids had panned the other day. There. I've got here's another two grams of gold there from uh, Nuggets by Grant. You guys probably recognize his card. Some of you guys probably you guys ordered from him before. I got a gold coin here. I got some silver here. It's just a wreck. I got some dimes in here. I guess that's a good problem to have. Have just a bunch of gold lying around. Put that back in there. I'll put that in the drawer. All right. Oh. So if you got, oh man, I got all this stuff laying out. I gotta get back in the drawer. <laughs> so, uh, Gibby says, "Right on." The folder away. Oh, and well, and we got the big boy here. We got, we still got a kilo of silver. Makes the table shake. That's pouring silver there. It's the uh, Silver Town silver shavings. So, we using those up here soon enough. Once we get. Get everything set up over at the shop. We'll start pouring. So as soon as I start pouring, you guys are definitely going to be there for that. Make sure that we go live so you can see see the operation in progress. All right. Uh, let's see. Barbados girls have a way of complimenting and putting you down all at the same time. <laughs> Every trailer park boy put out on DVD, he has as a bootleg. Very nice. Very, very nice. All right. Let's go ahead and get the sealer up here. Oh, sorry, I'm bumping the camera around. All right. Nice little U-line that we got. Crank that up to about a five. There we go. Nice. Nice and sealed. So, yeah, like I said, if you guys are interested in getting in on this, there are still spots left. Just PayPal me at IndieGuy711 at gmail.com. 
And uh, yeah, as soon as we sell the last of the bags, we'll be going to the panning party. Had a lot of fun with those in the past. Those are a ton of fun. If you guys haven't been there for one of those, we definitely have a good time. Uh, let's see. Um, they are, um, oh, uh, Red Step Stack bags are $35. Even though we saw a huge bump in gold pricing since we set the price, since I bought the gold at, it was, gold was still at $1,600 an ounce when I bought the gold for this. We are in good shape. So I'm going to keep it at $35 a bag. All right. And see, Gibby says, do the 90 day fiance on TV. My wife watches it all the time. So actually <laughs> that's kind of a funny story. Uh, my ex-wife and I, we were engaged, but we got married on the three month anniversary of our first date. That could be why she is an ex-wife. <laughs> you just don't learn enough about someone after that short a period of time. Although I will say, my girlfriend I have now, we have talked about that already. But no, I will not be getting married in 90 days again. 90 day fiance. I don't need to watch the show. I lived it. So... <laughs> Uh, let's see, $35 or donations. How much money per spot? $35, $35 a bag. Once we sell all the bags, we have a, oh, we have a panning party and everybody gets to see what everybody got, including that grand prize bag that's now in here. This is terribly riveting coverage, I'm sure. You guys watching me seal these bags up. Here we go. This is just really fun, I'm sure. <laughs> and Red says, how much? Oh, we already answered that one. In, 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 in. I don't know what that means. A few bags left here. Oh, that's the big one right there. I have a feeling the Joker, the Dutch auction bag, is going to go for quite a bit on this one. I think we sold it for 55 in the last game. I think we'll probably get a fair amount more for it next time now since gold pricing is up quite a bit from where it was. ROI, that's right. Your return on investment, uh, you know, there's seven and a half grams up for grabs in this which is let's see it's 60 62 63 dollars a gram right now that would be 500 bucks is that right seven times six is 42 plus a half of 500 bucks It's a lot of entertainment for thirty-five dollars. Faux show. All right, last bag. And Whew, there we go. That does it. Those bags are all done up. Look at all those. There's still one in there. Whew, that's smelly. Here we go. There they are. 
Get those shuffled up in there one more time. I don't know where where the nugget is. I don't know where the nuggets are. So it's in there somewhere. We know that there's that one big bag somewhere in there too that we know that one does not have it. So turn that down. All right. I'm going to go ahead and unplug that. Let that cool down. Uh, which one is it? Got too many cords here. There we go. So it should be able to be cool actually. Yep. All right. Tell you, that was one of the best things I bought right there. It's a good boy right there. Definitely a workhorse. Ooh. All right. Let me go ahead and put a lid on that. All right. Nope. There's a bag left in there. Hopefully that's not the nugget bag. There we go. Now we put the lid on. All right. And we'll put it right there. All right. I'm going to bring you all back in here. Hello. Oh, man, my hair's been messed up this whole time. Man. Nope, me the big one. There we go. All right. So, guys, thank you for sticking around while we did that. Just so you guys know, just so we can get it in one more time, we already have nine out of 20 bags sold. Uh, Justin Moody has three. Will Hornbuckle has two. Dan Keller has two. And Gibby's Treasures has two. I don't know whether we have sold any here during the live stream or not, but we have 10 spots left available. Uh, leaving one bag that we're going to uh, do a Dutch auction for um, during the panning party. So if you guys aren't familiar with the Dutch auction, um, it will the bag will probably start off at like $100 and then go down in $5 increments until it is sold. Um, somebody decides they want to chime in. As soon as they buy that bag and they, they buy it in the Dutch auction, we'll open the bag up right then and there. So... Um, it makes a little interesting, you know, throw a little, little, uh, fun into the, uh, the excitement. Dan Keller says he's got one more spot. Thank you, sir. So it's my hope that we can get these bags sold, um, this week. Uh, and so Tuesday next week, um, we can do the panning party. I hope we have them all. If we have them all sold by then, then we'll definitely do it then. Um, I'll be advertising these on the morning market wake up call uh, so we can get those all sold and answer anybody's questions that they have on that. So, all right, guys, I'm going to jump off of here. It is almost nine o'clock here in Indianapolis. So, we got to get my beauty rest tonight. Whew. Got get a lady friend, and then you start getting worn out. Goof. I know how that goes. Get the bags in the eyes. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, if anybody else has any questions or anything, feel free to go ahead and ask. We're going to wrap this up here in just a few more minutes. But um, I do appreciate everybody. Um, if you guys haven't um, seen a uh, red step stacks, um, um, his, uh, uh, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm going to turn this off here. Done. There we go. Uh, if you haven't seen Red Step Stacks, uh, Saturday movie night, it is a riot. Uh, I've, I, unfortunately, I don't get to watch them live anymore, but um, I do watch the replays, and they are great. So if you guys haven't checked those out, just, <laughs> Make sure you check those out. Ah, man, come on now. <laughs> Damn phone case. Ah, that's stuck on there. All right, well, I'm going to worry about that later. I'm just going to fold that up for now. Watch me fumble around with that. All right, guys. 
looks like uh, everybody's winding down. So, all right, guys, I do appreciate every single one of you. Um, you know, we should, before we leave, let's let's go and do a spot check. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold. This. I gotta hold this like this. This is dumb. All right, Dan Keller. I did. I got an email saying that I uh, got your your funds in, so we're good to go there, sir. Thank you. All right, uh, spot check. Gold uh, was down today. Silver was down today, uh, but they are rebounding in this day's trading session, which starts at six p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Gold's at nineteen thirty seventy eight. Silver's at 2542 and that gives us a ratio of 7596 platinum is rebounding at 94435 palladium also rebounding slightly at 216440 so um so silver had dropped down below 25 uh earlier this afternoon um gold was nearing 1900 so uh, so yeah, we're glad to see those numbers starting to to come back. That's uh, good to see. Let's just slide that right out the bottom. There we go. Boom. Done and done. <laughs> so, all right, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and head off to Dreamland, or at least watch some of the news and see what what country's blowing up. Looks like we got oh Jurassic Park is on. Oh boy. So, all right, guys, I do greatly appreciate every single one of you, and I appreciate you stopping by. The guys that have signed up for the Lego El Fuego, I appreciate you guys as well. That is amazing. Can't do this without you guys and your help. So stay sharp, guys, and we will see you in the AM for the morning market wake-up call. Have a good night, everyone. And again, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find your pockets heavy.